pushing this. This is going to hit nationwide tomorrow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool. That's, they can buy they're it. trying to get it on Ellen. Really? Yeah. So How fun. We went and fed uh, 500 refugees in Salt Lake. That's amazing. Uh, Thanksgiving. That's so so cool. every one of the, I don't know how well they explain this to you, but every one of these CDs we sell, 100% of the proceeds go to Silver Santa. Awesome. Be great. We had all people like yourself donate the talent, and then we had local businesses pay <coughs> the production cost. So 100%. We'll talk about that on here and where they combine this stuff. And Brett, we're live on YouTube already. We're live? I think just on YouTube. Yeah. So you can yeah. Oh, so we know. got Whitney's. Well, my head's in the way. Because <coughs> there's a lag. I'll scoot away. Yeah. Well, I need to sit up. Okay, no slouching. <laughs> just kidding. No, no slouching. <laughs> With the way it's angled like this, it's like I got a big rear end. And, uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's not very flattering of me. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how we're really professional too. <laughs> Seems fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It is that. It is that. I'm a fairly newcomer. But it is that. So, do we have any? Can we tell if they're watching on YouTube? Yeah. So I'm trying to refresh the people anymore. watching right now. So both of you out there, we're waiting for just a couple of minutes till we get going. We'd love your feedback on how well the 60s working. If you. Play with the 360 on your screen. And let they us won't know about the 360 until until we tell them. Until we tell them it's on YouTube. But our YouTube, our people that are on YouTube. Well, there's two people no. watching. Me and Brett. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. on, YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube. So far. Any subscriber to Channel Seven. Three people watching. Yeah, they'll get an email. Yeah. yeah. Are we? When are we live on Facebook? Whenever we want. We want it. Are we ready? We're ready. Yeah. Is it eleven? Look Can 59. you hit just go live, that red button on mine too? Thanks. Oh my gosh. So pause for this here and I will ah. just keep it So good morning to everybody watching. Um, I've got a special guest here today, and I think many of you might be saying, uh, James uh, is here in charge, and he has a guest, and it's me. Nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> so James, we're just so pleased that you could be with us today. And to your left, we have our fire chief, John Miguel. We're going to be talking a little bit about fire safety as well. Thank you. But first, we're really excited because this is the first time we've experimented with 360 camera technology. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to hop over to YouTube, our Channel 17 channel, you can actually watch this in 360 and you can manipulate the camera and watch that and, and spin it around and see anybody in the room. So if you get on, let us know if you like that and try YouTube Channel 17. Just search for Channel 17. So James, this is pretty cool. You're here. You are in the mayor's office. Uh, I wanted to get to know you better. Yeah. And you were so kind uh, to join us today. Thanks for Tell us, life. first of all, where you just came from. I just got back from uh, Laie, Hawaii. We did a show out there a couple days ago. Very nice. We got stuck in L.A. yesterday. Oh, so ooh, we, I'm uh, sorry. I wanted to try to make this so we... And, and not only did you try to make it, you got here an hour early. Yeah, that, my, <laughs> my Apple schedule, didn't didn't just time schedule, so it threw me off, but I'm, I'm glad we, I got here on time. Okay. Right in the so, uh, as many of you know, we do a Christmas CD. And uh, this year, uh, James um, was good enough with many other artists to donate uh, his time and energy to the project. So tell us about your specific song. Um, so the song is a collaboration between uh, me and the National Parks, uh, another Provo yeah, um, great, local great, band. Great. And uh, we decided to do Joy to the World. <coughs> they sang the, uh, the chorus, and I, I did a little rap spin on it as well, and my focus was less about like religion or to treat one another and how we should look at the world that we're all equals and we should help people who are less fortunate. That's Thank you. What a great Christmas message. So this is the first song on our album, the Christmas CD, that we sell and uh, I was talking to James before, we, we raise all the proceeds for the production costs and all the artists donate their time and energy. So a hundred percent go to the needy. And in this case, we're giving them to the Supper Center program, the United Way. Every CD that somebody buys 
is ten dollars, and ten dollars actually goes to the sub for saying that awesome uh, uh, project. And so you can hop online and buy the CD if you don't have it at MerryChristmas.com. Excuse me, <coughs> MerryChristmasProvo.com, and uh, and buy the CD. Buy it for friends. You can either download it or you can actually get a hard copy of the CD as well. So, and you were telling me just before we started, you're going even bigger with your song. Tell us. Tell us what's going on with your yeah, so sponsoring it. So um, we were able to get Nike and Traeger Grills to come sponsor it, and uh, Nike gave away, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of clothes. Um, Traeger Grills fed 500 refugees in Salt Lake. Uh, uh, thanks day before Thanksgiving meal, we gave them Thanksgiving, and it was really awesome to see that and help them out. We were able to capture it. Uh, David Archuleta. Uh, uh, Jeremy Guthrie from the pitch for the Royals was there, and we. We came together and, and tried to do something good and promote something good. Thank you, James. Now, we know how this goes. They ask a lot of questions, and I know one of the questions is going to be asked, so I'm just going to ask it right up front. We'll save all of you asking the question. I've announced this is my last year, and I won't be running for mayor. Now, you're sitting here in this seat. <laughs> have you considered running for mayor? Yes. <laughs> oh, there. Look, there you have it. <laughs> you hear it here first. Excellent. I did serious. I have Good. Well, let's talk about that. When are you going to start your campaign? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I have considered. Not. Not. It's not any like something. So you're not serious. joking. This is like something you really thought about. Yeah, I have definitely considered. Obviously, I'm not experienced in any way. But well, we've got I time. The election's not for a year. Okay. <laughs> Neither are the rest of us. So we just well, take it right. What is it? 20, 2017? Yeah. Twenty seventeen. James the Mormon. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you're making some candidates a little nervous out there right now, <laughs> James. Um, well, excellent. Well, you know, to be honest, it'd be really great if we could figure out how to get more of your demographic involved in the local government. What do you think the secret is to that? Um, things that they care about. I mean, that's just a basic politics. So yeah. And what would you say is different about maybe what we think you care about and, and what your, your demographic really cares about? Um, that is a good question that I do not feel not educated really, enough to really answer. answer that, yeah. But yeah, so I, for both you and I to think about. Yeah, it. I think I will think about that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you and I can do a joint blog post on that. Sure. That'd be. Good. Talk about that. Um, have we got questions? We do have a couple of questions. Okay, we'll go to the questions and we'll hit the chief here in just a minute. Uh, third. Let me promote just a minute. If you're not watching this on YouTube and you want to switch over to YouTube channel 17, you can watch it in 360. Great. Uh, we have a question about Third South. Uh, when is it going to be done? Okay, James. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Mormon. <laughs> okay, uh, Third South has been a very long project, and I'll tell you what: our residents along Third South have been incredibly patient. And we talk about, I think, some issues are important to you. And I'm going to guess a little bit. This was a street that you couldn't ride bikes on. Mm -hmm. The sidewalks were were too small to even uh, ride on the on the sidewalks. And we've redone the street. It'll, it'll, it's almost complete. Tentatively, we have a, a ribbon cutting for December 15th. And I say tentatively is because there's a lot still to be finished on that. But we're that close to what's called substantial completion. It will really be the spring and summer before we get the landscape finished in there. But the road will be open and ready to go on December 15th within a day or two. Great. Uh, did we name the new park or are we sticking with Parky McParkface? <laughs> James, what would you like to name? What new park? I'm assuming they're referring to the park that's up on, uh, that's up close to the high school. Uh, on Canyon Road. On Canyon Road, yes. It is, if it's, that's the one, it has not been named. And so. And it definitely shouldn't have that one. So yeah. yeah and, and, that's and, just my personal opinion. Yeah, and as a candidate, he's saying he's against that. <laughs> I will not name it that. Canyon Road? Canyon Road yeah. Park? Good. That's just where we So, for a minute, the questions are coming in. We've Chief here, Chief uh, John Miguel. If you haven't met him yet, uh, Brett, let's spin that face, uh, Facebook camera over at the Chief. Chief, this is a time of year when you get a lot of fires uh, that could be prevented. Mm -hmm. Can you give the, the nutshell of what you would like everybody in our city to be concerned about? You bet. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Miguel, and I'm your fire chief. Uh, I've been here for about two months and could not be more pleased to be here. Um, the three things that we deal with the most when it comes to fires in your home are heat, lighting, and housekeeping. And let me just touch on those just for a second. So 
heating. Typically, uh, when it gets real cold, we're bringing in um, auxiliary type heaters. Uh, we are maybe using our fireplaces. We may not be maintaining the fireplaces the way that we should. We may not be keeping the proper clearances, but we see a lot of problems with auxiliary heating. So we would encourage you to make sure that when you have a heater, that first of all, it's of this vintage, that it's uh, that it that it's actually has some safety features in it, like a, like a switch, so that if it's tipped over or if it gets too hot, it will actually turn the power off to it. Um, and that uh, when it comes to our fireplaces, that we are being very careful with what we put in our fireplaces, how much we put in our fireplaces, and, and whether in fact our chimney has been cleaned. Because we, this is the time of year where we get a lot of chimney fires, and chimney fires obviously can, ex can escape the chimney, get into the attic, and then, and then what we have is a house fire. So we would, we would ask you to take a look at those things and, and certainly be careful. Uh, lighting. Um, we, lighting includes everything from our Christmas lights to candles. And uh, we've already had a pretty significant fire just a couple of weeks ago. Pretty significant fire caused by a burning candle. And, um, and uh, this really goes for all appliances. Um, appliances should be turned off, uh, unplugged when you leave the house for a, dur for a long duration. Um, and if you have any appliance in your home, whether it be the TV or uh, wiring or lights that you've had for a long, long time on your, on your Christmas tree, if you have anything that you have to wiggle, hit, uh, shake, or just hold perfect in order to get it to work, it needs to be replaced because that seems to be, uh, people tell us oftentimes, gosh, I knew that something was wrong. I, I, had to wiggle the, I had to wiggle the cord in order to get it to work and it resulted in a fire. And the last thing has to do with housekeeping, just keeping things away from ignition sources, keeping things away from your heater, keeping things away from your fireplace, keeping things away from your water heater, and just making sure that things are, are in general in, uh, in good working order and clean. If you'll do those things, you'll drastically reduce uh, the likelihood that you would have uh, a fire or some sort of incident that would displace your family or, or heaven forbid, harm your family. Thank you, Chief. The Chief and I were talking this morning about this fire in Oakland. And if those principles had been followed, we wouldn't have had that fire go the first time. I'm not sure why that fire started, but if, if, if uh, there were some basic principles that were not followed, and, okay. and you're absolutely right, Mayor, that uh, that was certainly preventable. Okay. Certainly preventable. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. A couple of comments. Me or James uh, or the well, Thomas says, uh, thank you for being a fabulous mayor. Our boys love James. Wonderful, wonderful people in the community. Um, uh, we have some shout outs of love for the chief. Uh, somebody who's also announcing, Ryan Love apparently is gonna be the next mayor, he says, so you may have some, an opponent. Uh, it says, can you comment on the eminent domain proposal on 3110 West? James, you, me or you? I'm gonna go with you, you on this one as well. Okay, um, yes, um, many people are aware that we just opened up Lakeview Parkway, and that's a section of the road that runs from the freeway at 1860, right there by the Home Depot, down towards the airport. Uh, that road's um, only partially complete. It's intended to go all the way around, past the high school and up to Geneva Road. And um, the part of building roads is one of the tough things is that you need the property and it frequently goes through areas where people um, uh, would prefer the road not go. And uh, that's hard because if, we, if we've always built around people, we would never have the roads go where we need them to go. So tonight on the council's uh, agenda is giving us the authority to go ahead and, and purchase those. Uh, I will say this, that um, although they're authorizing or we're asking them to authorize them in the domain, um, our full intention is to work with those neighbors without the force of, of, of that eminent domain to come to a resolution on buying we just purchased a number of pieces of land to build the section that we're in, and almost all of those went amazingly smooth with great cooperation between the city and the landowners, and that's always our intent when we build the road. Uh, we've talked about submitting a request, Cynthia Woodstock. Uh, we've talked about submitting a, a request to rename our street for several years. We're on uh, 370 North, just north of the River Trail and also uh, intersect directly with 470 North, which creates a unique reason uh, to clarify. Uh, how much cooperation will we get from the city on this, and where do we start? What is the process? I'm going to let Wayne answer sure. that. 
Um, yeah, street name requests are defined by uh, local ordinance. And we can, uh, if you make a request to the engineering division, um, or you can just email me, wparker.org, and I'd be happy to get it in the right place. Good. I, I think, bottom line, we would be receptive. Sure. Uh, we look at those things all the time. Uh, there's actually some people that, uh, a lot of people have asked me if we'll eventually be named Bulldog uh, right. once the high school's moved. Mm -hmm. And I suspect there'll be, that's a good conversation to have. Uh, and there's been some other suggestions that we should rename other streets in the city. Uh, Caleb Carperwitz, does the city have any plans to help update or possibly remove the motel slash used car dealership and old music store, soon as the Harris Building, uh, south of Provo City Center Temple? So that's a hard question. <coughs> And um, the, the reason it's hard is that's private ownership. And so the city can, can encourage or the city can promote certain things, but this kind of relates back to that eminent domain question. We don't go in and say, oh, you must sell your property because we want to develop. I think it's fair to say we would love to see that part of the city redeveloped uh, between the front runner station coming in and the, and the Provo Temple. We view that area in there as just extremely valuable redevelopment of that property, and um, I think residents will see in the upcoming years quite a bit of redevelopment in that area. So I need a question for James here. Courtney, you have a question for James? You asked him a question. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I wanted you to talk a little bit about how you worked with um, National Parks on your song. Was it, um, did you record at different times? Um, did they kind of do their track and then you came in and did yours on top of it? Or yeah, so um, so Chance Clift, who uh, I believe produced most of the album, yeah. uh, was kind of the facilitator. He communicated with them. They came in. I was actually there uh, while Brady sang and uh, um, kind of went back and forth on some, some things of how it was per performed. Um, and then, you know, I think some of the girls came in later as well. And uh, Chance really, you know, with Chance you can just like do your thing and then it will become, he just does his magic he and he turns good. out good yeah, every single time. So. He, and he produced your album, right? Yeah, so he, he, uh, he co-produced almost every track, makes him master the whole thing, cool. the albums so. that I've released before. Get here, why? A member of the fire department presented to our neighborhood chairs about urban fire hazards. One of them was mentioned, and that I immediately thought of was, and what I immediately thought of was, was the west, uh, the, the west hillside above Lyons Park in Grandview South neighborhood. Uh, in the middle of the winter, such a fire is, is uh, such a fire is not much of a danger, but in the middle of a hot summer, oh, hold on, my screen just flipped. He's basically asking about that hillside <coughs> over by Lyons Park and the, the level of hazard that that, uh, that, that provides. So over the last couple of years, the, uh, the Provo Fire Department, along with the County Fire Department and the State Fire Marshal's Office, has been very aggressive about going out and talking to neighbors and, and, uh, and producing defensible space. And you will hear us talk, probably starting in February, you'll start hearing us talk about defensible space and, and being able to um, have enough room behind the houses so that if, in fact, there were a problem, that it would be able to be taken care of with no threat to the structures. Um, so please count on the fact that, uh, that you're right. Um, the winter gives us an opportunity to prepare for the spring so that we can get our word out, we can get some mitigation done on some on unsafe uh, parcels, and then we have the ability to uh, lessen our problem when we actually hit fire season in July and August. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Thomas Newell wants to know if the mayor's going to be making a cameo on your next uh, album, James. <laughs> Do you sing or rap? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all laughing because they know <laughs> Let me just put it this way. Uh, in seventh grade, they asked me to transfer out of a required general music class. <laughs> all right. Well, based on that, I'm going to have to say no. Oh. <laughs> 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 You know, only a, because of that. <coughs> I was in National Parks, a couple of their videos. 
Oh, and the strike. Streaming. Is it so? We're talking about just featured in a video. And the strike. Yeah, yeah, the strike. Oh, they asked. Uh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. We'll find, if it, find if it's just, it's just not. Yeah, it says, will, "Will will we be hearing Mayor Curtis rap?" No, uh, with James that, that on the track can anytime right, that, soon. <laughs> no performing <laughs> music, but obviously, yeah, obviously, you're welcome to be in our uh, in the next video. That would yeah, be a bucket list item for me. I, I, I freestyle <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> These guys don't appreciate me. All right, other questions. <laughs> uh, we've got a question on yeah. Facebook from Brandon Cruz about a, any news of a target mm -hmm. coming to Provo or any changes at the Town Center Mall. So, um, Brandon, is that, did I catch the right name? Brandon. 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 Yeah. Thank you for the question. The, the reason this is a hard question is when we talk to these large retailers, they don't like to send signals to their competitors about where they're operating in the market. So <coughs> we always have to be a little reserved in how much we share. But I think it's fair to say that we're having extensive conversations uh, with not only uh, the targets but similar retailers um, and we keep hoping that we're, we're that close to an announcement and uh, a lot of work's been done and especially at the Provo Town Center there's there's a couple locations where something like that might work the new mix uh, it would work there at the Provo Town Center and, and even uh, a second or third op third or fourth option so hang in there, be patient with us, and, and just know behind the scenes a lot is going on. Um, Lao Lo asks, are you fluent in any other languages, Mary Curtis? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I don't know enough to say yes, but I think you're asking when did I learn Asian? And I was uh, in China. I, I lived in Beijing for all elementary school. Wow, how yeah, about that? So I speak yeah, fluent Russian as well. What the um, what? <laughs> an interesting background. Your your mother is works for the government. Yeah, sure. Right? My mother uh, runs the consulate in Vladivostok right now. And so I grew. I went to elementary school. First grade was Taiwan. Second through fifth grade was Beijing. Okay. Middle school was Russia. High school was Uzbekistan. So, so Uzbekistan is a former Soviet Union country, and I spoke Russian. So, so I speak before Russian. your admission, you, you were very fluent. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And your Chinese is very good too. It's, you said well, just a like little bit. Just no, a tiny, you said tiny a little bit, bit, but that was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've forgotten a lot of mine. I, s I served in Taiwan in 1978, okay. 79. In Taipei. Uh, Taichung. Taichung. Okay. That was you were Taipei. you were in Taipei for school. Very cool. So how about that, Fernando? No, <coughs> yeah. We're all blown away. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, what else have been done? What else have you been thinking about to increase the tax base for Provo? Well, um, uh, the, the way we collect revenue as a city, um, sales tax is our highest, um, our biggest category. So we've spent quite a bit of time on that, trying to improve the retail tax base uh, in the city. The other forms of taxation that we have at our uh, disposal based on state law is very limited. The, the other main one is property tax, and nobody likes that. And so clearly the, the way to expand it is in retail. Um, this is another question, the same question I was asked last time. Are we planning on putting a tennis court on the roof of the new Slate Canyon Water Reservoir? Do you remember? Yes. What so, you, you, why don't you answer that, Corey? Well, the short answer is currently no, we're not planning on but it. But it's built. But it is built in case we get the funding to be able to do it. There is a place to be able to make it happen. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a tremendous amount planned for that Slate Canyon area. Um, currently, the, the bike course is funded, and then there's a much larger master plan over a very, very large area that's unfunded. But right. Th down the road, that would be an amazing park. Um, let me see here. Uh, somebody wants a rap battle. Um, Mayor Curtis, what are your thoughts <laughs> on the I think you would win because I'm terrible at freestyle. You don't freestyle? No, not at all. Really? Mm -hmm. So where do you, 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 is it, you start off with it in your head and then you work on it? And um, so it's very calculated. I like other people send me music, which it, and if I feel something from it or like it, I come up with a skeleton of kind of the melody or the structure of the song and then I just fit the right words and, then, and it's all like a process and do you ever freestyle at all no don't even try 
if you don't know, if you're not good at something, just you don't try. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to try right here with yeah, either. We would just both <laughs> <that's> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good is going to come yeah. out of that, is it? Yeah. Okay, no, no rap battle. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Uh, we have another question about the West Side Grocery Store. Yeah, this is pretty, we ought to just record this and play it every time. I know people on the West Side are dying to get a grocery store. Um, much like the conversation that we had with Brandon just a minute ago, there are a lot of conversations going on behind the scenes, but at this point we have not been able to interest a grocery store because of the number of residents that, that live in that area. They just work on real strict formulas and we don't have a population base. That being said, our West Side is on fire right now in, in growth and, and I think that's going to change that equation. And that's scary too, right? Because on the one hand we want the growth and on the other hand we're all scared of too much growth. And the council right now is spending a lot of time uh, researching uh, what they want the west side to look like and be, and, and that'll answer some of these questions for us. Um, somebody wants to have their, she has two sixth graders and wants them, they're talking about the feasibility of having a snowball fight, which is against Provo Ordinance. Yeah. So many decades ago, Provo City passed an ordinance that you couldn't throw a snowball. Mm. Um, it seemed a wee bit outdated to me, and so we approached the council, it's not our current council, but the council a couple of years ago, to see if they would consider taking that book, uh, that rule off the books, and they were unwilling to do so at the time. But it would be interesting to approach our current council and see. I kind of think we could celebrate by having a snowball fight in the council chambers. Uh, I, awesome. I need. I need my deputy chief. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on Facebook. Yeah. That, yeah, so when we talk about getting your demographic involved, that would do it, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Let's do it. Okay. So tell her I'm not really sure we're out writing citations right now for throwing snowballs, but it still is on the books. There's certainly not a lot of snow. So um, uh, what are your thoughts on the maker movement and how Provo can become a maker city? So the maker movement, I, I think, is a fabulous movement. It's, in essence, the concept of, and, and I'll probably get this wrong for people who are actually experts in it, but of making things and, and using tools in your hands to make things. Mm -hmm. And just like we have like, this crazy positive startup community in tech, this, this would mirror that in, in manufacturing and in making things. And uh, there's been one gentleman in our city that is quite strongly opinionated about uh, that and and would like to go big and what I'd love to see them do is start with something um, a little bit smaller that's easier for us to s support. We do that a lot with our entrepreneurial base with Camp 4 and some of the other things. So I actually think it's a great movement and um, has a lot of potential to really, really spun off a lot of great companies. Great. Do you have anything over there, Wayne? No, um, can you talk specifically about what locations for retail you've been engaged in? Yeah. Um, the mall uh, down there that is a huge area, the whole East Bay area, not just the mall. But the, the mall is a focal point right now, but even across the street uh, east of that, in that uh, area there, there's been quite a few conversations. Uh, what we call the mix, which is the old Shop Co. Plaza, is, um, uh, is going to be totally redeveloped. You're going to see the Shop Co. come down mm -hmm. in, in short order, and that grocery store come down and rebuilt and redeveloped in there. And even across the street, uh, the Walmart uh, neighborhood store there, um, the, the BRT is going to change the access in there, and I think we're going to see an infusion of new retail in, uh, into that area as well. Uh, the shops at Riverwoods, just a, a, an amazing, beautiful place, and uh, we don't talk about that as much, but we probably should talk about it more. It's a great place and growing. And our downtown area, our downtown area is is um, is really fun and exceeding everybody's expectations. And we have more and more retail coming into our downtown area. Uh, there are some other corridors uh, that are not as uh, hot and, and eminent. One of them is the whole Center Street interchange there was zoned freeway commercial, and we expect retail to eventually come into that area uh, there as well. Okay. We're 30 minutes. We're yeah. 30 minutes. James, what would you, uh, what's your Christmas message for everybody other than, I mean, kind of along these same lines of getting involved and, and making the world a little better place? Um, you know, my message has always been the same. You know, it doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation, your religion. Um, you know, we should all treat each other like we're exactly the same, like we're all children of God. And 
that's that's the same message I'll continue to share. It seems pretty obvious, but we get it wrong, don't we, sometimes? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Chief, any, your last message? Be safe? Yeah, be safe. And uh, remember what a special place Provo is. Um, having, having just arrived here to live, I've been here many, many times over the last 30 years, but having just arrived here to live, this is an amazing community, and I feel very blessed to be here. And, and I hope that uh, we can all focus on the wonderful things that it offers us as families and, and community. All right, and my last uh, pitch as Corey's turning that camera around is uh, check out the Christmas CD. You can get uh, James the Mormons uh, uh, with uh, National Parks is the, is the first one on there. We're going to play it here as we're signing off. If you log on to MerryChristmasProvo.com, you can download the CD for 10 bucks. 100% of that $10 goes to United Way's Sub for Santa program. Buy them for your neighbors, your people at work, your siblings. It's a great $10 gift. James, I'm really pleased that you joined us today. Thanks for inviting me. Chief, thanks, and everybody Thank else. We would love feedback if you were on YouTube, how it worked for you. Uh, we'd like to kind of expand that, so let us know how that worked for you. Check out the CD. Let's turn it on as we sign off here. You're not going to lip sync for it? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't make him uh, perform. didn't tell me he was going to perform here, but we'll listen to it as we're signing off. Thanks, James. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a great picture behind your...